In this video, you'll learn how to create native applications for iOS and Android that share functionality and provide a bespoke user interface for each platform. We will be using Fire on my Mac and the Swift language, but the same concepts work with any of the other Elements languages, as well as in Water, our IDE for Windows. First, let's create a new iOS application project. Choose the Table View template to show a list of data. Make sure the Use Elements Runtime Library option is checked and click OK. Next, right-click in the Solution View and create a second project. This time, choose the Android List View template, which uses the Recycler View class to display a list. At this stage, we have two separate applications, one for iOS and one for Android. They don't do much now, just show an empty list. There's nothing shared about these two yet, so let's change that. Right-click the Solution window again and add a third project, a shared project. Drag this shared project onto the other two projects and they will reference this shared one. This new project will hold the code shared between the two apps. Now, iOS and Android are very different platforms, not just in look and feel, but also in what APIs are available. The iOS app compiles as Cocoa code against Objective-C provided by Apple, while the Android app compiles to Java Byte code and uses Java APIs provided by Google and Oracle. Traditionally, this would make it very difficult to share code, but Elements makes it easy in two main ways. First, we can use the same language for both apps. That means a lot of code can be written that is not platform specific, but will compile for both. Second, there's the Elements RTL, a library of common base functionality that bridges the differences between the APIs across platforms. For example, normally you would need to use NSURL session on iOS to download data from the web, while on Android you would use HTTP URL connection. These are very different APIs, so you would basically write the same logic twice. Elements RTL encapsulates this and more. Let's see it in action. For our app, we want to download a JSON file with weather information for a wide range of cities across the globe and show it in a list. Right-click the shared project and choose Add New File and select a class. Let's call it Data Manager, as this class will encapsulate all access to the data from the web. We'll keep this class entirely platform agnostic, so it can be used on iOS, Android, and in theory, other platforms in the future. Some boilerplate to start with. This class will be a singleton, meaning only one instance will exist at any given time. So let's add a property to do that. Then let's add a method that will download the weather data asynchronously and call a callback when it's done. For this, we can use the HTTP and JSON document classes from Elements RTL. And finally, let's expose the data for the rest of our app to use. That was pretty easy, right? Keep in mind, in a real-life application, this class would probably be a lot more complex and contain much more business logic and plumbing. Writing once and sharing across platforms can save both time and errors. Now let's look at using this class from each app. This requires writing a little bit of Android and iOS-specific code. First up is iOS. Here's our table view controller. In the ViewDidLoad method, we simply add this quick call to download data and trigger a reload of the table view in the callback. Then we implement the usual couple methods in the UI table view controller to return the actual data. We get the number of rows available from our data manager, and we create a UI table view cell, set its label, and done. We could now run this app, but let's complete the same steps for Android first. Here's our main activity for the Android app, which is already set up with a Recycler Viewer control. This class is similar to the table view on iOS. In the onCreate method of our activity, we initiate the download of data from our server by calling download data, and in the callback, we put the data into the list view. Finally, we do need to make the cells show the proper data, which we do in the list adapter. First, Let's change data type from data item to string because our locations list is a simple string array of airport codes. Then we use code similar to iOS to set the proper display label for each cell here in onBind view holder. Last, let's look at the list item layout file and add a padding here for a clearer view. With that, we're almost done except for one last step. 
That's declaring that our app needs permission to access the internet. Open the manifest file and add a uses permission entry. So here we are, both apps done and ready to run. Each user interface is created using native UI controls with all the backend data access shared. Let's give them a spin. In the device picker, let's select the iPhone XS simulator as the target for our iOS app and the Pixel 3 emulator as the target for the Android app. Also in the top right, you'll see the active project picker. Let's select our iOS app and hit Run or Command-R. You'll see the project builds, and then the iOS simulator boots up, our app launches, downloads data, and it looks like we're in for some good weather. Back to Fire. Let's switch the active project over to the Android app and hit Run again. It builds, the Android emulator boots up, and here's our app in all its glory. This has been Shared Projects in Fire. Stay tuned for more videos.